Watch carefully now, because what these actors are about to do for science is mesmerising. <laughs> the average Western woman cries two to four times a month. The average man, zero to one. But what are these strange floods of water we humans uniquely produce? And are emotional tears really different to other sorts? Tears of sorrow? Are you ready for the onion tears? Well, get ready for a weepy as we collect our tears and put them to the test on a mission to discover why we cry. Okay, I got my tears of sorrow, onion tears, good to go. The inspiration for this quest came unusually from the art world when we stumbled across these stunning microscopic images of one woman's tears. Tears are something that we all experience. And I was curious, well, I wonder if grief would look the same as joy. Each crystalline tear sure looks different, but is it? University of New South Wales Labs, Bring on the biochemistry. Which is kindly being conducted by dry eye expert, Professor Mark Wilcox, to whom my carefully collected, authenticated by method actors, tears of sorrow are delivered. The reason I'm so interested in this analysis is that if you look on the web, you'll see it's widely stated that emotional tears have 25% more protein than onion tears and the suggestion is they contain some sort of special pain relieving or calming chemical. But look more deeply and it turns out all that goes back to just one paper that was published back in the early 80s and has never been replicated but somehow become fact. So, maybe a bit of myth busting here. The professor already knows what's in our normal tear film. That's the fluid we produce to protect and lubricate the eye. But he's pretty sure emotional tears will turn out just the same. So what have we found? So it's really interesting. So as you can see, we've got um, three sets of emotional tears and yep. three sets of onion tears. Yep. And in fact, we've got between 20 and 25% more protein in emotional tears compared to onion tears. No way! Yes, exactly. So that one study back from 1981, Looks we've like actually we've, confirmed it. We've replicated it. it. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, okay. Yes. Well, that is a surprise. Because I thought we were going to debunk it. Exactly. Yeah. So did I. Gosh, gosh. So what does it mean? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. We had a look for that supposed pain-relieving chemical, and there's no sign of that. So at least we can debunk that idea. But for the life of us, we can't work out at the moment what all those extra proteins in emotional tears are for. Any guesses? Not at the moment. <laughs> OK, here's a chance for an excellent PhD. <laughs> but maybe the key to our emotional tears isn't so much what's in them, but the fact they're visible at all. That's what they believe here at the University of Queensland, where scientists are testing what the sight of a tear does to us. And what's truly remarkable is how quickly we respond. Pay attention now, this is coming at you fast. OK, so what I'm going to do now is show you some sad faces very quickly, at around 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. And then afterwards you'll be asked to rate how sad you think the photograph looks. Right. I'm ready. All right. Could you see that face? <laughs> I did not see that. So just go with your gut, whatever your gut tells you. To explain, these are all pictures of sad faces, half with tears, half without. Slowed down, it's easy to see how the addition of tears makes it really obvious what the person is feeling. But what's fascinating is that we respond even if we can't consciously see tears. OK, I reckon I saw nothing. How did I do? Well, at 100 milliseconds, you rate people with tears as sadder than the people who didn't have tears. My brother was injured in Afghanistan last year. Not only do we rate people with tears as sadder, we're more moved by them. 
His role was to search for landmines. Look at what happens to my face when I see tears. They miss one and it went off right beside him. My eyes are riveted by her tear tracks. My brow contracts with involuntary empathy. Talking to no one. He says his life is over. Extensive studies from the Netherlands reveal we're far more likely to offer help to people who show tears than if they don't. All of which suggests our response to tears is deeply hardwired and the human tear evolved as a sort of emotional super signal. It must have been something that some ancestor was able to create this secretion and those people who could do that when they were sad, were more likely to be taken care of and cared for, and so you basically get this, these criers that get passed on where they, their generations after them now can show tears as well. So how did tears start? Well, they're thought to stem from the distress calls of infants. All baby animals emit vocal signals when they want care, often loudly. But human babies uniquely have added this visual super signal, which evolution retained into adulthood. Actually, looking at this footage, I think I can see a real purpose behind all that extra protein and emotional tears after all. Just look at this incredibly perfect, stable tear. It hangs around for ages. Now, by having more protein in it, the fluid is thicker, gluggier, and more likely to produce a really visible, slow-moving tear. So Mark, this tear is what gave me that idea. What do you think of the theory? It's amazing. It's very stable. I think you might be right. It, it seems like proteins in tears may actually help structure the tear film and therefore structure it to look like a teardrop. So they act like a jelly, I guess, in tears. So you think there's merit in my theory? I do, yes. Yeah. <sighs> Be they tears of sorrow or tears of joy. They may be mere blobs of protein-filled fluid, yet that perfectly shaped tear has been selected by evolution to exert a powerful emotional pull, bonding us as a community and binding us in our shared humanity. And without tears, I doubt we'd be human at all. <laughs>